And I'm recording on this computer, not on the cloud this time. All right. Uh, so I'll just quickly recap what we did for the recording. Uh, we have a index, we have a HTML document that has an unordered list here. We have app.js. We made a function to render a bunch of users from a list. We need a function to fetch those users from an API. So to call it, we just run fetch users dot then, then we pass our responses data to our render users function. And if I look at this, all right, it's not working. Let's take a look and see why. Uncaught promise cannot read property of append child of null. Um, your UL is referencing the UL, not your list. You're right. Yes, thank you. Right, again, there we go. There's our list of users. George Bluth, Janet Weaver, Emma Wong, etc. Any questions on how we did that? This should probably seem pretty, uh, we've done this a few times by now, right? All right, so the next thing is I want to be actual to, I want to act, be actually able to send this, create a new user out there. So we look here, users have an email, a first name, a last name, and an avatar. I'm not gonna worry about the avatar, but I'm gonna say, okay, we should be able to type in a user email, first name, and last name. So we update our form to uh, reflect that. Let's create a label here. We can kind of copy, copy this. Something like so. All right. And first off, uh, before I even write a function, what's going to be the uh, what's the event? What's the event I need for this for in order for this function to work? Our own blur. On blur. Our form. Yeah, because we want to submit the form, and once we submit the form, we want to make that API request. So we can even just add on submit equals, we can call it, you know, host user. We're going to have to make the function. And for now, I just want to say console.log, make sure it works. So I'm going to just hit submit. Oh, all right. Blink and you'll miss it. But, uh, so what's the problem here? It's just refreshing. And why is it doing that? Yeah, that's the default behavior of a submit, of a submit button, is when you submit a form, it refreshes the page. And we don't want that to happen. So we need to make sure that it does not do that. So we can, so let's try it by doing this. There we go. All right. Now we need to, now that we've prevented the default behavior, what do we actually need to do to our form? From our, what do we need from our form in order to actually make this useful? And those things to that list. Yeah, so that actually raises a good point I was going to get to later. So from this list, we're gonna get a first name, a last name, and an email. And from all that, we can make a user object. And that's more than enough information to update our list to reflect this new thing, right? And we can do that before we even, we can do that before our fetch request comes back. We can even do that before we make our fetch request at all. 
we have the information, right? What's stopping us? And this comes to, this brings us to a kind of, I'm not sure what the word for it, not paradigm, but a question in uh, web design is do you render things optimistically or pessimistically? Optimistic rendering means, all right, I'm just, I want to prioritize speed and convenience. So I'm going to make sure that as soon as I submit data, I'm going to update the DOM to reflect that data, regardless of how the post request goes. I'm going to assume the post request is going to, uh, going to work. So that way, what's on the page and what's in the database, they'll, probably, they'll definitely be the same. And it'll go a little bit faster because you don't need to wait for the fetch request to come back. Pessimistic rendering says, OK, but what if it doesn't? Pessimistic rendering says, all right, we could do that, but if we update the DOM and something goes wrong, then we're showing our users false information, or we need, or it could also mean that we have to do a, just trigger a re-render once it's done, which would be a little weird and annoying. There isn't necessarily a right method or a wrong method when it comes to optimistic or pessimistic rendering. I tend to err on the side of pessimistic rendering because I prefer to make sure that my information is absolutely accurate before I update my DOM to reflect it but it can also be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. So I'm going to do some pessimistic rendering for this one. So in order to do that, I need to be able to get the, get the values out of each of these, right? So how can I do that? Yeah, so I could use, uh, so I've only got, well, I've got, uh, I've got four inputs here. So I could do something like using query selector all and get all of the inputs, but then only work on the first three. I can also use something like event.target as a starting point, because event.target allows me to say only this form, because we might have other forms on the page. Because if I console.log event.target, that gives us the form. And from the form, we can get to everything it has, including all of its inputs and labels and stuff like that. Actually, I'm going to try something. Will this work? Nope. Okay. I can let me do that. Maybe that's only a command line thing. Yeah. Okay. So let's try it this way. So. I'm going to be getting my form. Here, it's messing around in the terminal. All right, here's my user list. So the question is, from my user list, how do I get to, uh, oops, didn't mean to use list, I meant the form. All right, one sec. Form equals document dot query selector <laughs> form. So now form refers to this. That does not work. There we go. All right. So now how do we get from the form just to these three inputs to get their value? Yeah, we got the inputs, not the labels. We can actually, you know, thanks to this, we can see all of the things available to us. Elements. Take a look at form.elements. Index value. All right, so interesting here. We got HTML. Form.elements give us HTML form controls collection. Each of these is an input. So I bet we could do something like this. Is there? 
I'm trying to remember, does JavaScript have a filter option? Or does it have something else? It does. Let's take a look at filter. Creates a new array with all elements that pass the test implemented by the function. So we could do something like elements.filter. And then inside that we could say elements element dot type equals x. That filter is not a function. Oh, because this is probably this isn't a, an array. Maybe we can convert it to an array though. Come on. See if it's array dot from. There we go. It gives us three inputs that are and leaves the submit button out of it. We can actually copy this. Okay. Instead of if form dot elements, we just do event dot target dot elements. And just to make sure nothing went wrong, I'm going to console all log inputs. Thank you. Yeah, my computer's doing this weird lag thing right now. I'm not sure what's going on there. Three inputs. No, uh, none of them. Our submits. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an object to represent a new user. Like user, user object. What the heck? User object equal. And a user had a first name. We'll set that equal to inputs zero dot value last name equal to inputs zero dot value. I need to put a comma and email. Also, I realize this should be colons and not equal signs. Inputs. Wow, I'm sleeping in so much really kind of wrecked me, I think. <laughs> there we go. So we created a user object. One, one, two, two, inputs. Oh boy. There we go. The reason I've formatted this user object is I want to be able to make a fetch request and maybe a post request is always a little bit trickier than making a get request. Get request, usually you just have to say, here's what I want. Let me have it, please. Uh, a get uh, post request, you kind of need to provide some papers, as it were. So I'm going to let URL equal HTTP slash slash request dot in slash API slash users. Uh, fetch to URL, but I'm going to add another argument, which is going to be an, op an object. And does anyone remember kind of when you're making a post request, what are kind of the three things you need in order to like in order to actually make a successful post request? We need headers, we need a method, and one more thing. And a body, exactly. So first let's make the headers. And the headers will have a content type. And that content type, in this case, is going to be application JSON. So what is that? What are the headers usually for? Why do we include headers? Remotes, any, any takers? 
the headers is just a way of us giving information to our API about what we're what we're giving them and what we expect back. Content type application JSON is essentially saying we're sending you JSON and we're expecting JSON back. Then method method is going to be post. That one's pretty spell self-explanatory. We're telling it, hey, this is a post request, treat it as such. And then our body is going to be our user object that we created here. We need, in order to actually include that, we need to turn it into a string because HTTP requests can only be strings. Call json.stringify um, user object. Bless you. Thanks. <clears throat> Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call it dot then after all of this. Response. Response dot JSON. Another dot then. JSON response. And I'm just going to console dot log. It just to make sure we got something back. So. I do Carol Danvers, Carol at Avengers.ca. Uh oh. Okay, this is a weird thing I've noticed sometimes. Sometimes I test this and it allow it says this API claims to be uh, allow allow every API request and then sometimes it doesn't. And I'm not sure what exactly. Oh wait, I've got. I think I know what I did wrong here. I'm gonna make it HTTPS. Let's see if that makes a difference. There we go. So this is our response, and as you can see. It has a first name and last name, the email that we gave it. It also has an ID, so that means that you know it was successfully saved to a database, and it also automatically gave it a timestamp. So now the question is, okay, so let's render this now that we've got it. So I am gonna alter this a bit. I'm gonna have this. All right, so instead of dot then console dot, instead of console dot logging it, I'm going to call my render users function here. And I'm actually going to put it inside of an array because render users takes an array, even so we can just give it an array of one thing. Take a look and see if this works. Nope, I accidentally hit it twice, but there it is. Okay. Any questions on how we have rendered this, uh, rendered this from our form? All makes sense. Yeah, so just always keep in mind whenever you're making a fetch request, you're going to have to include headers, a method, and a body when you want to post something. When you want to update something, it's going to be almost the exact same thing. And when you want to delete something, uh, you don't really need a body. You just need headers and a method, I believe. All right. Last call for questions before I put this uh, little example away. Okay. In that case, <coughs> I'm going to get started on new site five.
So taking a look at GNU Site 5. So let's first see what it says here. HTTP methods. I want to talk about how to set this up. Initial setup. There we go. So you would copy over the work we did in GNU Site 4 challenge into this repo. This time we can copy and paste the entire SRC directory from GNU Site 4. Great. So here's GNU Site 4. Let me close a bunch of tabs here. npm install and npm install and npm run start. Oh, that doesn't look good. I actually need to go into the directory, that's why. Try that again. While it's going on, let's take a look at what this says. Verify the no errors between your browser console terminal and that your app functions the same way as it did in the last challenge. Also, try NPM, running npm run test. Be a single failure from the articles api.js. We're going to be adding something new to Articles API that looks like something called Add Article because we want to actually add new articles. All right, well, while we're waiting for this to go, we can at least start adding uh, articles API add article to this. Make a function here. If you take a look, it says, All right, so it's object of objects, so it's options. So it should be taking, and I think this believe I believe this should be taking an article object as an argument. Make sure we fetch. Make sure we have our URL and say what it is right here. It looks like this is almost done. Our fetch request. Make sure we get our headers.
Is it running or is it broken? Okay, there we go. Uh, what was the way of turning off our, our, uh, these warnings again? I know we figured that out. Great, cool. Uh, oh, all right, nothing wrong there. If I click here, that all works. Except for the home page, that doesn't actually know what to do. If I fix that, and if I look at my search function, if I type in Nostrum, I got things that match that. All right, cool. Looks like we're ready. It's continuing my fetch request. Headers. Then Method is going to be post. Body is going to be JSON stringify our article object. And then we can include this in our export. And while we're here, let's make, make sure we, let's say we return this fetch request and have a dot then. So we wanna return our parse to JSON response, whatever it is. Could be an error, could be not. So we defined a function called that article, it takes a single parameter, forms a fetch call similar to the one above. Convert it into a string. What's in the Not sure. We could also run the test like it said to do. Let's see what it says. Uh -oh. oh, it took me out of the directory for some reason. Taking its sweet time. So we're having some failures. Whoa, that doesn't look good. All right, seven, seven failed, six passed. Let's see if we can get a look at this a little bit. I run F to run only the failed tests. So I may not have been passing all my tests as well as I should have been. But let's see if I can find at least the one, see if I uh, got this particular test wrong. All right, so it looks like fetch articles by section. All right, it looks like at least the add article test passed. So I'm gonna call that a win for now. <laughs> And we, if we weren't sure what it's gonna look like, let's take a look at our API. Because we know our endpoint is gonna be this. And generally speaking, when we did the uh, refresh one, it gave us back the object that got created. So I think it's fairly safe to say that whatever we get back is probably gonna be one of these. But we'll have to actually, once we actually make these post requests, then we'll have a better idea about whether or not it will. All right, release one, the add article page. So the add article page will be used to display a form that will allow users to submit an article. Let's first begin by creating the route and the page. The route should display the add article page, should be an article, no parameters are necessary. All right, we can do that. Go to app.js. I can just do route exact path equals add article. Is that what they said? When your page component and route are established, you make a uh, 
mark add article page for this. So, add article page.js. We need to add an article link to our appnav.js component. <laughs> what doesn't happen? What, what about when it comes to parenting, though? All right. So all right. So I should be able to say something like right here before I return the link, I can say, Links.append. Oh. And inside that, we can put a link object. We're going to send that to add article. Oh. Also, what's the beef? Uh, not sure. That that was just what I was. I saw to do. What does a B B object do? B HTML. Oh. So it's bold. So we're bolding. We're bolding this, and then we can say add new article. Expected dot 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 from equals. There we go. Uh oh, something broke. Links.append is not enough. Okay, so we can't just put it on to the end of the links. Okay. In that case, we can just grab this, get rid of all of that. Just put this right here. Not for styled very well, but if I click there, it takes me to look post 3000 slash I article. All right, so now we have our, that's good. Let's go to, so we need to make sure that the component of this is going to equal the add article page. We need to import it. pages slash add article page. And then we need to actually make this. What's that cool shortcut for making a functional component again? I always forget. Oh. No, wait, it doesn't work for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, dang. Oh, well. OK. So let's get this going. Something there. All right, so if I take a look at my components, I should see the add article page rendered here. Great. All right, now that we have an add article page with nothing in it, let's take a look at what it actually says. So we need to render a form, and that form should contain three fields. A title, a byline, and an abstract. In addition, form fields will need a submit button. So we're using React Bootstrap components to create these form elements. I don't feel like that at this exact moment because nothing else in this is using React Bootstrap. And I just want to make sure I have a form that works before I do anything, any cool styling. 
And once you have the form appearing on screen, you'll need to build the behavior that should occur when the form is submitted. Okay, we can do that. Add a label. That label can be, so it's title. Actually, let's add a little colon here. And then an input. And we can have a line break here. Then we can copy this. So it's at title, byline, and abstract. And underneath all that, we can put in uh, input that type will be submit. There it is. Submit re-renders the page because that's the default thing. So now we need to make sure that when we submit this, when we submit this, uh, we should be able to post an actual R. So why do I keep on typing on, clicking on things I don't mean to? All right, let's see what else this says before we read on. So you should have a unique event on submit. The events object that's passed into your event handler okay references to all the input fields that are property called elements. So the question, so we need to make a function called handle form submit. The question is, where should we define handle form submit? Should we define it in the add article page or somewhere else? Well, the question is, when we, so when the form submits, we're going to be adding a new function, right? I'm adding a new object to our list of objects. And what, uh, what does that affect? Yeah, it affects the entire list of articles that we have. And I believe in state, do I not have these in state? Maybe I don't. Where do I have my, oh, that would probably be, did I, where did I put that particular thing of state? Was it article list? Sorry, <laughs> this is obviously one of the hazards working in the big framework is the bigger it gets, the more you're like, okay, now where did that live? And this is why we sometimes use state management systems like Redux, because it's like, oh, everything lives in the exact same place. So, is an article page. Ah, okay, so this is article page. Article page does not render this. So, yeah, but home page also doesn't render our ad article page. You know what, now I'm thinking about it. What we may need to do then is think, okay, all right, so this, maybe we won't be able to update state directly, but when we make a poster bus, we can also say, let's go to someplace else. And when we come to, say, our home page, we have a component did mount, we can also have a component did mount, and that'll automatically fetch our new updated articles. Okay. So it all fits together. So it looks like we're, it looks like it should be safe to add uh, this function to add our in this case. Call it handle form submit. And before we do anything else, is this going to need any arguments in order to make sure nothing happens that shouldn't happen? Event. Yeah, it's going to need to take event as an argument so we can event.prevent default. And we 
can also make sure we console.log event.target, make sure everything's the way it should be. And then we can make sure our form on submit equals, and if we want to make sure that this takes event as an argument, we need to wrap our function call in an anonymous function. Let's say events. This would be handle form submit that takes event as an argument. So looking at no, I'm wrong. Handle some oh okay, I mean I forgot to there we go. So I open up my console, hit submit. There's our form. So now we have, from here, we have it. This is exactly what we were doing earlier this lecture, is we need to get the information out of these, and then we can call on our function to uh, post a new one. Pretty cool, right? Before we continue with this, uh, it's 10.53 now. I'm going to pause for a break here. Come back at 11.03. Let's take a 10-minute break. And then we'll finish up with uh, new site five.